Alright guys, the time has come. It's time to finally pick up the Honda 250R. I've been wanting one of these since maybe four years ago. Um, and this one popped up in Green Bay. This thing is completely mint. I will not have to touch this thing, which is awesome, but at the same time kind of sad because I, I would like to have a project, but this thing is sweet. It's a 1989 Honda 250R. Um, he says he doesn't want to sell, but he, need, he needs to free up space in the garage. Lots of work done to it very fast. Check out this thing. So, it has an 86 OEM crank, Wisco forged piston, head requenched, full drag port, LRD adjustable pipe and silencer. Those pipes are sweet. I looked them up. V-Force reeds and cage, Hinson clutch basket, Barnett clutch, K and air filter with pre-charge, 450R front shocks, extended A-arm, and then he said more that he's forgetting, but you get the point. And then it comes with a full set of extra tires on rims. So that thing is sweet. He says it's the fastest machine he's ever owned. He said it's just in insane. Um, so it runs perfectly. Um, he wanted $29.50 or best offer, and uh, he said he wasn't. He's already taking a loss at that. He bought this for three thousand and put money into it, so I think he's got like five thousand into it, and he's selling it for. To me, I offered twenty three, so I kind of feel bad about that. But I lowballed the twenty three, and he said twenty five, so I'm I'm pretty pumped about it. He would not budge at twenty five. He said he, he's already feeling sick to his stomach selling it at twenty five. This thing is mint. Um, there's this other big bore one up for sale for twenty two, or it was up for twenty seven, um, and I offered twenty two, and he would take twenty two. But this one's a lot cleaner. Um, it's got better pipes on it. Lots, lot more updates. Has like the polished aluminum rims and everything, so it looks really, really good. Um, so yeah, let's go pick this thing up. It'll be in the back of the truck in no time. I'm just pumped. So hopefully you guys are too. I know a lot of people in the comments wanted me to get a 250R, so here it is. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And um, this should be an awesome series. So. All right, guys, just confirmed. I'm gonna go pick this thing up. I am literally shaking. I'm so excited. These um. 250Rs don't pop up very often on Craigslist, and when they do, usually it's around Christmas because people need the money, and uh, I should actually just go pick up both, honestly. I should just go grab the big bore one and this one. Um, I think this one's just a little bit better deal. So, it should be pretty, pretty exciting here. Hopefully it's as nice as the guy's saying. But uh, we'll be on the road in no time. All right, I was gonna bring the trailer, but uh, I don't even think I need that. I think that's overkill. We'll just lift it up into the bed of the truck and I think we'll be good. The 250Rs are pretty light. So uh, let's head out here. All right guys, on the road, 43 minutes to get there. I uh, got the cash. By the way, just a tip. If you guys are picking up um, bikes and stuff on a regular basis, um, on a daily basis. I would recommend having cash in hand because on Sunday, obviously the banks are closed so you can't kick money out. Luckily I had $2,300 in cash and I just had to take another $200 out of the ATM. Otherwise, my ATM only lets me take out 500 cash um, per day. So that's just a tip. Just have cash on hand. You never know when a good deal pops up. Anyway, we'll be there in about 42 minutes. So stay tuned. Hopefully it's gonna be an awesome machine. All right, 23 minutes away here. Um, I'm gonna ask the guy when I get there if I can record the buying process on this thing. Um, a lot of people say no, so don't be surprised if I don't get any recording. Um, a lot of people don't like to be in the videos and um, or show their face on video, so don't be surprised if he says no. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna ask him, I'll just be like, um, I do YouTube, do you mind if I record the selling process? And then I always tell him you don't have to be in the video if you don't feel comfortable. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't feel comfortable. And they're like, could you just not do it? And, you know, most of the time I just respect that and I don't do it. But hopefully this guy lets me. He seems pretty decent. So let's uh, let's give it a shot and see if we can get this buying process because that'd be pretty cool. All right, I'm good. You got a YouTube channel? Yep, I'm Joe, by the way. I'm Ryan. Man, that thing's sweet. Yeah, it's. I don't know. <laughs> it. It makes me sick. You're already depressed? It looks better in person. I know. I started drinking an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it, man. So, what's the story on it? I bought it about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, 
just don't have time as you can see it I, I work on stuff yeah you got a lot of stuff cool yeah so the only thing that's in here that's mine is that one really and that's why I said I need to get a get it out of here more space yeah now, I have a shed but it's that's not gonna sit in the shed with a dirt floor that's way too nice yeah so every day I'm out here working I gotta push it outside you know yeah if it snows it gets snowed on and then I gotta bring it in and clean it and it was um I mean, I've owned a lot of sport quads in my life. Banshees, yep. blasters, Same. 50 hours. And Quadzillas have you owned? Yeah, it's the one I haven't had. Oh, yet. really? Yeah, but this, I never, I mean, in the way this one's built, mm -hmm. six gear, if you don't have good traction, you can't hold it wide open in six gear because it, it won't <laughs> grip. Wow. I mean, you're going... 60 plus miles an hour, you know, probably faster. I don't yeah, know. for a 250, that's crazy, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't build it. I do build motors. I can't take credit for it, though, because... It's beautiful. I mean, that's... I mean, it, I clean it, you know, it's it's definitely... Look at those pipes on there. <laughs> no, I know, it's hard to find those, too. That's an Yeah, I know, I looked them up. Pipe. Yep, yep. I could probably get more if I tore it apart and parted it out, but... <laughs> It would yeah. make me sick to do that too. Yeah, yeah, either way it's like, uh. But it's jetted for 60 degree weather, so it'd probably start a little hard in the cold. Yeah. Have you owned two strokes before? Yup, I've owned uh, probably like six Banshees. Oh, sweet. Um, four Quadzillas. Um, How do you the, like the Zillas? They're like rumbly. Because yeah. they're single cylinder. It's a big 500. Yeah. yeah. And they're a pain to start. Oh, so is this one. Really? Yeah. Okay. You, we just, just prepare yourself. Okay. I'll show you the trick. You're going to want to. Is there high compression or no? A lot. Okay. A Same with the Quadzilla. See, so like, and the but Quadzilla. The stock these weren't as bad. Okay. But this one's built a little okay. different. <laughs> yeah, so the Quadzilla, I don't know if you're familiar, but the way do you kick it? Is this. It's forward kick. Okay, yeah, forward kick. Yeah. So it's back kick. And the quadzilla and there's like a room there's like a space like this big so the foot lever is like right here and then you have to kick between the foot lever and the whatever and your ankle gets caught yep it's horrible i've only got whapped in the shin by this one time yeah and it sucked yeah but um the, you know the trick is to give it you know try and find the get the piston at the top yeah and then get the kicker halfway down and give it one good fast kick with a look like a quarter of a throttle. Yep, that's exactly like the yep. Godzilla. Exactly like that. I actually knew a guy who had a Zilla and I seen that thing backfire and shoot him over the handlebars. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I almost broke my leg on it. Yeah, it's it's not fun. Yeah. But, so yeah, I know what to expect on these. I never even put the stickers on when I registered it because I didn't want to screw it up, you know. Yeah, it's it's really nice looking. Yeah, I mean, especially I mean, for how old it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you know you're gonna have to replace a little wheel bearing or something here or there, shit like that. But the back, I got a stack of papers on it too. Oh, everything done to it and stuff. Everything except the current motor build. The dude built the motor and then sold it because he got his hands out of Banshees. What he wanted to do was drag race it. Oh, okay. Well. Manchi is a little bit better for straight line. You got two cylinders compared to one. Yep. So he got his hands on a Banshee and he's like, I'm going to build this instead. So he dumped this one off. These are better for the track though than the Banshees. Oh yeah, way better. For yeah, the everyone uses these for racing. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. Banshees are better for like the dunes and stuff like that. Right. But. Oh yeah. All the brakes work and everything? Yep. Alright. And you paid three grand for it? Yep. Okay. That I did. I came with the tires though, and I put a seat cover on it too, because the seat cover was pretty much in shambles when I bought it. It's a nice seat cover too. Yeah, I mean, it, you can get them on eBay for like 40 bucks. I, it, you know, it, it's obviously aftermarket plastics and, and tank cover and everything. Well, I don't know, tank cover, they were blue in 86, I think. Yeah. The blue doesn't match perfect, but it's, it is what it is. Yeah. But this, so basically, the guy that originally owned it had it for like 20 something years. Oh. This was everything that he did to it. Okay. Wow. And then. Did the receipts add up to like a crazy amount? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then I think he had, I don't know if he raced it or what he did with it, but he ended up, it's a two stroke. They don't last as long as a four stroke. Yeah. So that guy blew it up and then he put it in the shed. Well, I shouldn't say shed. It was like a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And then it sat there and the guy I bought it from saw it and he's like, hey man, I want you to sell it to me. I'll build it. And so then he did the 86 crank, had the head redone, lights go, piss and rings, all that. It's not board like it's not a 330 kit or anything. Mm -hmm. It's board over, but that's just the clean up. I saw one up there for a, um, it was like 2700 bucks. It was like a big bore, uh, 330 kit, but yeah, it didn't look as good. Yeah, so. sorry, makes yeah. yeah, but um, I don't know for what this is. I, if I was to keep it, I would have never wasted my time with a 330 kit. Yeah, um, and I don't know how long ago, but the back shock was rebuilt. That paper's in here. And you said there's 450 shocks in here in the, the front? front shocks are off of a 450R. Okay. Moose racing, the arms, nice. Yeah, I think they're plus two, but I'm not positive. Okay. So they, yeah, I think... Maybe. They're, I know it's wider. Yeah. A little but, bit wider. Yeah. Looks like it. The only thing that sucks about it is the headlights are pretty much useless. I mean, okay. And one of them flickers in and out. Okay. So I was so always like a bad ground or something. Yeah, but I would throw an LED bar on it because it's gonna be brighter. Okay. The one time I had it out, like I said, I rode it four times, and the one time I had it out, it was um, getting to dark, and I pretty much had to just hold it right open to get back because I couldn't <laughs> see shit. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but that's my hair. That's the nice thing about that is, you know, you can kind of customize it yourself. Yeah. And the bars are old, the handlebars, so they don't look the best. But other than that, I mean. I mean, they're still upgraded, though. So. Yeah, I think it's a completely different steering stem with the riser. Yeah, it looks like it's, yeah, it got the risers in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, huh, interesting. It looks like brand new calipers, too, almost. Unless they were like powder coated. I, I mean, I, I always use the shiny stuff when I clean it up. Oh, so maybe that. But I think even like the 250EX uses the same spindles and everything. Okay. So there's, you can get parts that aren't 450 or 250R. Oh yeah, that's some good compression there. Yeah, it's, it's a bitch to start. <laughs> when I first bought it, that, it... It probably didn't have, did it have that much compression? Oh yeah. Okay. Easily. Holy cow. But that's... the first time I started it, it did one of those where it kind of starts and then doesn't and it comes back at you and pounds you in the bottom of the foot. Oh man. The one thing I never changed was the case fluid. Uh, okay. He said he ran AMS oil in it. Okay. For the gas, that's another thing though that sucks, is the gas you got to mix at least 110 okay. with 91 50-50. Okay. Now, you could jet it different I'm sure. Okay. And bring it back down to run it off a 91 pump. Okay. But I always would buy a jug of uh, turbo or um, BP Blue, which was rated for 112, but it didn't have racetrack dye in it, so it was significantly cheaper than the, the 112 that had the dye that was rated for racetrack. Okay. So, but you could like, Shell Station down the road sells turbo blue, that's 110. Okay. You could do that, it ain't gonna hurt it. Okay. So, but that's your call, you know. Okay. The way he had it set up was 112, 91, 50, 50, and then I only ran clots super tech in it. Okay. Um, I would not go with anything else in this particular motor. You can get it on Amazon, a half gallon is only like 20 bucks, so it isn't that bad. Okay. And then I ran it, so everyone's got their own opinion on this. Okay. I ran it 32 to 1. Okay. With the $12 spark plug, right? Mm hmm. It, will lo it would load up once in a while, but you can clean it off really quick by pinning mm -hmm. it. Okay. Uh, another guy that I met on the trail one time who was big into the R's, he says run 50 to 1 with all the oils out there, especially with the oil I was running. He's like, dude, 50 to 1. And I, thought, I don't like that. It's going to cost a little more to run it, but like I said, I've never been on anything that fast in my entire life. Yeah. So. Yeah, I bet it moves. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then it's got, well, I don't know, did you read the whole ad? Yeah, a bunch of aftermarket stuff. Yeah, the clutch, he has a Barnet, or Hinson basket Barnet clutch. Again, I mean, the clutch, if you pull it, 
it's kind of tight. And I remember being worried about that too, like trail riding. Mm-hmm. But it, it didn't even affect me. What what hurt more is hold, holding the throttle open. <laughs> my got tired. But yeah. my, my clutch hand never got tired. Yep. But, you know, you got to have a nice tight clutch with the amount of power it has, otherwise it's just going to slip. Yep, yep. So, yeah, better to have a nice tight clutch than so have it slip all the time. Right. Yeah. So. Swing arm original? Looks like it. I think so. I think they use pro legs. I was always into the newer quads, but then I had a banshee and I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, those things are sweet, they aren't are. they? Yeah. Dude, it's hard with the twin cylinder. They, they seem to blow up pretty quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you don't have those carbs sync perfect, so. what what I always hear is if it's running great, expect another week and then it's gonna blow up. <laughs> <laughs> but these single cylinder one carb, it's pretty much straightforward, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's clean in there. It's pretty. I mean, it's pretty clean. It's not the cleanest. I've seen ones that are nicer than this. Yeah. But they're also in that uh, four grand above range. Yeah. yeah. I've seen some guys that have original 86s that have never been touched and they're asking like seven, eight grand for them. Yeah, I saw it on eBay for like eight grand. That's it's nuts. Like, I mean, you'd have to have some cash for that. Right. And it ain't worth it because you, I personally couldn't buy something like that and enjoy no, it. No, no. I'd be worried about those are the people in the fender or something. Yeah, those are know? the people that put it in their uh, living room and just watch it. Right. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's kind of a shame too, but. Right. It'll start, it's just... In the, summer, a while. in the summer, it'll start on the second kick. Do you know what it's jetted at right now? It's a 60. Or 160, I believe. For the main? Yeah. I believe. Pilot? I never brought, I never even opened it up. And then, looks like I left the gas on. If you leave the gas on, gas, uh, you'll get a little overflow. Bit of a trickle. Okay. Yeah, it smells like gas. Yeah. Yeah, the overflow's right there, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you but it doesn't leak out of the engine at all? No, no, that's gotta be out of the overflow. Looks like powder coated frame. Yeah, I think you had the frame redone. But I, like I said, I always spray the shiny stuff on it, so you know, it always looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> all right, well, you're the master at it. All right. I'll let you give it a shot. Let's see if I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that thing looks clean. And then it's just, it doesn't have a key, it's just a, you know, tether. Okay. Like a jet ski. <laughs> yup. So, pull the choke up. Yeah, man, watch this whole process here. Right, so the choke's right here, this is also how you adjust the idle. Okay. I've got it dialed in. Okay. Once it warms up, it idles. Okay. But you just pull straight up on that. All right. To adjust the idle, you actually have to spin it. Okay. Clockwise, counterclockwise. All right. Okay. Maybe even that more. compression sounds good though. Oh yeah. You'll know when it's about to fire because this thing will shoot me in the bottom of the foot. <laughs> Hasn't been started in probably a month. <laughs> oh.
man, that thing's sweet. That thing is insane. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, the clutch is a little bit different than the it's on tight. one. Yeah, it's not bad though because you don't have to pull it much. Yeah, it's and tough like with I gloves said, on. I can't really feel my hands in the cold anyway. Well, yeah. And it's, I mean, I only rode in the summer and I had riding gloves, which are a little tighter. Yep, but yep. yeah, I mean, it uh, again. I was concerned about how tight that was for trail riding, but that was the least of my worries. It was the throttle pull. Trying to hold on. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, you can tell that thing's gonna go. I mean, oh, dude, I yeah. It sounds mean. It is. I'm not kidding. I mean, I've drove a lot of stuff, sport bikes, and dude, this uh, this makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take her. Right. Looks pretty sweet. Yeah. I'll grab the money for you. All right. All right, guys. Well, we got the machine in the back. I don't know if you guys can see it back there. We got the ramps in the way. But uh, he gave me a uh, full set of tires to go with it, so that was that was pretty good. Full tread. Guy was super nice. Um, so thanks again to Ryan for selling me the beast. Um, took really good care of it. You can tell, it's super clean. We'll do a walk around when we get home. But uh, he definitely took good care of it, and uh, I think he was sad to see it go. So thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. And um, we'll see you guys when we get home. All right, guys. Just got home. This thing is literally insane. We'll do a quick walk around at the apartment. But uh, we'll do a quick walk around and uh, I'll show you guys all the features. It's pretty sweet. Then we'll go through this whole packet and see all the, uh, the specs and what was done to it. So let's take a quick walk around. 450 shocks in the front. Steering stem is different. Let's get the moose racing uh, A arms here. Look at how clean this stuff is. Call your coated frame. Updated seat cover and plastics. Looks pretty clean. Aluminum rims, and then the uh, the extra tires that come with it. Whole set of brand new tires on the older rims. Wrath chain guard protector. This thing has six gears and it wheelies in every gear, uh, Ryan said, which is insane. LRD, LRD pipes. Really hard to find pipes. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's uh, go inside and take a look at the specs here. 
All right, guys. So here's the deal. Got this packet full of like probably 50 receipts or more um, from the previous owner. So let's just go through real quick. He actually had a dyno, um, and this was in 2003. And he said he's got um, pipe reads and filter. It said pipe reads filter. I don't know what that means, but um, it said the max power was 32.8 horsepower on that run. Um, so that looked pretty good. That's pretty. That's pretty good for that. Um, Let's just look through some of these receipts here. I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is make a an Excel sheet with every single cost on this and then add it up. And I'll put that in the video so you guys can see it. But it is an insane amount of money that was put into this thing. Um, let's just go through some of the stuff. So this receipt came out to $138. Bearings kit, swing arm bearings, and um, um, what does that say? Something for 50 bucks. So that, that one came out to $138. This one came out to be 131. Um, this is case saver and clutch. So the clutch was 90 bucks and the case saver was $35. Um, that was $131. Um, this was $210. Honda frame and miscellaneous pieces. Powder coat, um, dark blue and black. $210 for that. Um, rear fender, crossbar pad, and um, clamp kit and bars. Um, Trail Tech ATV big bar clamp kit and handlebars polish all that came to be a $312 for that um, Air filter outerwear and flange nut came to be $54 for that one. So these are just adding up like crazy um, This was total $65 for a what is it? Um, exhaust power flange Um, let's go through some of these pretty quick. This one came out to be $187 for to bore the cylinder. This one came out to be $182 for a scoop and grill kit. $182, you can see right there. This one came out to be $19 just for some miscellaneous stuff. $30, um, $81, $32, this is just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff here. $10, uh, $31, $33, or no, $35 I should say, $30. And then let's back here. $30. $162 for the gasket. Gasket for water pump, gasket for reeds, and then the ACC Delta II reeds. $135 for that one. $32 for a couple washers and grommets and rubber pieces. Um, cushion C mount, $8.72. And a bunch of rubber pieces that came to $32, $33 for this, um, $66 for this one, um, bush, shock, upper, so it must have rebuilt the shock here, shift beanie cap, um, radiator reserve and dust seal came to be $75, there's a big one in here that's like over a grand, um, $13, so there's a bunch of little, little things over here. $63, $71, lots of money was put into this. I think this is the big one. So tank cover, front fender, um, all the wheels and the, the, um, the spark plug, brake rotors, sprockets, chain, Douglas aluminum rims and uh, wheels, that came to be $944. This one came to be $357 for the the axle. It's a PU ACC axle TRX 250R. Um, yeah, 350 bucks for the axle. Um, LRD performance specialties, installation instructions, adjustment and jetting. Let's see what he paid for these. 
I don't know what he paid for those, I'm guessing a lot. Alright guys, hopefully you aren't bored with the video yet, but uh, as you guys saw, I listed... I went through all those receipts and there was a bunch more, and I actually listed every single item down here, along with what the total was for each receipt, so you can see those here. Quick, before we go through everything, take an estimate of what you think this guy spent on this machine. It's a crazy amount. Just take a guess down below in the comments before you take a peek at the total. It is insane. But uh, this guy ended up spending, obviously the guy before Ryan spent this much, um, ended up spending $6,781.55 on this thing. And I ended up estimating the Honda base price, which was the price of the machine starting out. Could have been anywhere from 1500 to 2000 to maybe even 2500 I don't know, but I put 1500 down as a base price, and then for the pipe, I put 500 down, even though it could have been more, could have been less. Um, but the total came to $6,781.55, and actually on the inside of the folder with all the receipts, the total was like almost $6,000, it was 5900 something, and he said 99% done, and that was in 2003. So you can imagine how much more money was put into this machine since 2003. It's got to be an insane amount. It's got to be over seven grand easily, because the Moose Racing, um, the Moose Racing, A arms were on there. The seat cover wasn't on there, um, and stuff like that. So it's got to be over, well over seven grand into this machine, which is insane. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be a sweet, sweet series. So definitely stay tuned. Um, if you guys want to follow my Instagram, it's two underscore vintage underscore. I'm going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes videos on this, so definitely go to 2 underscore vintage underscore to follow me behind the scenes. And um, this week I'm going to be trying to upload almost every day um, before Christmas, so definitely stay tuned for the videos. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on post notifications so you guys get it every day. You don't want to miss this series. It's going to be good. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time, we are out.